I'll start with someone else. Uh, I, I, I haven't heard George Oppen's name here in the last couple of days. Uh, George Oppen, uh, he died about 10, 12 years ago. Uh, he uh, was a World War II, was a truck driver, World War II. Uh, and truck drivers in World War II often got their young butts jammed into the infantry, except George's butt was 45 years old. Uh, he was a very angry Jew who went back after uh, Hitler and fascism. There's a wonderful collected that uh, New Directions keeps in print called George Oppen. In the middle of it's a poem called Survival Infantry. <clears throat> and the world changed. There had been trees and people, sidewalks and roads. There had been fish in the sea. Where did all the rocks come from? And the smell of explosives, iron standing in mud. We crawled everywhere on the ground without seeing the earth again. We were ashamed of our half-life and our misery. We saw that everything had died. And the letters came, people who addressed us through our lives. They left us gasping and in tears in the same mud in the terrible ground. I lost a good friend last August uh, to lung cancer, uh, Lee Childress. There's a poem uh, in Returning Fire to him, and this is another Vietnam War poem for Lee Boy Childress, Rest in Peace. Woven or laced over the tongue, gobs and clots strung along sung. Words show how they left themselves. Soldier boys face down in the paddies. I write as if you watch the orange splash flash speed spread across that green over that village in that order. You see palms that look like bent matchsticks, burnt bent matchsticks and running children crying, meaning passed on swollen into flames. Big chunks you don't recognize show up red one place. You could be digging there at twilight. And it fits the night you spend waiting several words at once, and they fit the darkness. The real kind spills letter by letter, whatever facts come in. Nights you button down, suck it all into your foxhole like a dream because. Maybe I should read the other one for Lee. That's his worn and torn version of his sculpture. Actually, Professor Anderson has the slides if you want to look at them. When I am 19, I was a medic for Lee, who sculpts light. All day, I always want to know the angle, the safest approach. The right, I want to know the right time to go in, who is in front of me, who is behind, when the last shots were fired, what azimuth will get me out, the nearest landing zone. Each night, I lay out all my stuff. Morphine, bandages at my shoulder, below that parallel my rifle. I sleep strapped to a 45, bleached into my fear. I do this under the biggest tree and some nights I dig in saying my wife's name over and over. I can tell true stories from the jungle. I never mentioned the fun. Our sense of humor embarrasses me. Something warped it out of place and bent I drag it along, keeping track of the time spent and measure what I think we have left. Now they tell me something else, but I've heard it all before, sliding through the grass to get here. Long Range Patrol. Tense again, there is a cat, and sure, I can sleep in the dark. This blanket's bulletproof. The attack will come on the other side. They won't get me, they don't. I am home, it is daylight. And then our sentry blows his claymore. We all let go and I wish I had dug deeper or it wasn't me or my friends hold me. I am home. It is daylight. Uh, it's kind of refreshing, you know, to read some things. You don't have to explain all the words, but I just realized y'all are Air Force people and you might not know what claymores are. Uh, 
but we used to stick these little things in the ground that had a couple of pounds of C4 and about 2,000 little BBs in them, and there was a command detonated anti-personnel mine, and they were very thoughtful to label one side, place this toward the enemy. <laughs> I was always grateful for that. <laughs> but, uh, gee, I think I have eight minutes. I'm terrible about time. I mean, what's a few minutes? This is, I'll read four or five medium length poems from uh, this new manuscript, which is now actually starting to be as gray as I am. Uh, this one's called Steps. Uh, think elephant, big snakes, and lots of water, more water. Imagine swimming, the motions it takes to stay, the stars involved. Sometimes when you're fighting for your life, any life you can walk through, you have to stand and fire into the leaves at people you can't see. You put your kisses there. It gets that close. You rock in the pivot. You find wings don't work, and all your ache towards lift is pretend. Cascade. Very much in the Latin sense. Fall, fall. It's a kind of waterfall that you guys in Colorado know this. Lots of little waterfalls make a big one. In this kid, I'm a dream, reaching first light. I'm with the learning band that wants to play ball. I practice blowing a short, large-belled trumpet, shiny, shiny, I cannot find the notes. The whole thing tilting, tilted, blowing, blowing, helicopter, hot approach version. You're not quite looking straight down through no door, but close. You do have the belt on. Those boats are fishermen bobbing in the waves off Quinn Yan. Central coast of Vietnam always, all teenage death cult crap. Baseline so deep, you hope it's your heart. You have to get closer. Something to do with picking a thick tree and never standing in a firefight. And steady, step by step, it carries you. A no moon night just north of Contum. 500 plus NVA soldiers walking trail, 10 meters from your sleeping position, and you're awake. Raise your arms flapping, but no flight. All these wings things are starting to have relevance. It's like I was totally in a grunt unit, the worst of the straight legs. I want to read two more poems um, that I have no sense of it now. I want to read the one I, that I wrote for Bill Earhart. Uh, if I can put my finger on it here. Where'd I put your poem? I know. Oh, here it is. Okay. This is called the Nam. Uh, you know, soldiers like to shorten things so we don't have to talk very much because John Wayne didn't. <laughs> the Nam. You have to lose a child to understand. Lose a child, fever in the night. Child convulses in heat to death and you have to stand there, waking up. You stand again, you can still walk. You can go back to the dark each night, and you do. Set up until first light. There are lists each morning. Calendar to mark days since. You use it, you keep track. It's a game to keep going. You figure the minutes, then you eat. One day, you manage three meals. For a while, you're full, and you stand there. This is uh, uh, Vietnamization for Bill Earhart, W.D. Earhart, who has this and my eternal devotion and gratitude. You're in this someplace else you dream. Night a thing, tough shit all over, darkness. You're talking to the kid who picks up the pieces. He tells you he's tired of the hours, the long hours, bending, the explosions, the weird dink songs up through the brush. One damn thing for sure, he says, next time, I don't want to run short of the bags. These guys get greased, they're going out like they're supposed to. No more makeshift crap. Some asshole somewhere can afford it. Ain't a bit of fucking funny involved, he says. For a while, you don't hear the music. I think I'm done.
Thank you.